We're cracking open another Belgian beer today, but this one is a sour Belgian hibiscus beer. So, maybe good? Maybe? Be going down, people of the world! My name is Redbeard, and this is a daily drink vlog for the beer of the today. We've got a bottle of Time Bomb Sour Hibiscus Belgian Ale by the Stack Brewing Corporation. Huh, yet another brewery that isn't actually called a brewery. I always thought it was the Stack Brewing Company but it's the Stack Brewing Corporation. Interesting. Really not anything of notes on the bottle. Little tag says it's 7.5%. That, that's all that I know. Pretty cool label though, minimalist, but I like it. Yet another beer that was bought at the brewery. So I've had it for two months-ish. So I didn't really have in my mind at the time the whole I should be dating these myself when I get them and maybe even ask for ingredients when it's like this, but I did not, so let's just uh, crack her open and see what we get. If I can fucking... This bottle opener doesn't... isn't easy to grab. This little man that doesn't like it. All right, let's see what we've got. I'm assuming the first pour... Okay, that looks really nice. But like I was just gonna say, I assume this pour is going to be nice and clear. And then if I want, we can make the second pour not so clear. Although, judging by the look of this, I might just want to keep it the way it is. That looks fucking gorgeous. Wow. As always, all the thanks in the whole wide world go to those who watch my videos. The beard loves you all so very, very, very much. So much of the beautiful going on in this glass. Oh my goodness. That looks like a... I don't even know, like... Raspberry ginger ale, maybe? I don't even know if they still make it. They used to make that. It looked kind of like this. It was good stuff. Oh. It's got a bit of the funky kind of sour smell. And then some kind of fruitiness that I'm assuming would be the hibiscus. I'm not really getting any yeast in the aroma. Let's give her a shot. What the fuck? There's yeast in the flavor, for sure. But... There's so many things going on in there. It's not bad. I don't know, though. Let's do this. Cheers, everybody. The tartness is awesome. The yeasty flavor is not awesome. In my opinion, okay, if, if a couple people bitched at me not all that long ago for, you know, not liking beers that a lot of people do like. Like, some beer might get 99 out of 100 on rate beer, whatever the, the beer rating websites you can go. That does not mean I'm going to like it. I might hate a beer that got 99. A lot of people might hate a beer that got 99. I am not a professional sommelier, whatever the fucking term is for somebody who knows everything about beer. I don't know a damn thing about beer. Just, you know, trying to expand my palate and share my experiences with you, and... It's kind of a review, but, you know, it's... Someone who doesn't know what they're doing reviewing a beer kind of thing, so don't take any of this seriously, really, you know. I'm serious about the flavors and stuff, but I don't, I don't know, the overall theme of the channel, not too serious. If that makes any sense, sorry for the random rant. If you're the kind of person that does enjoy the yeasty flavor of a beer, and you like a sour beer, then get you some of that. Because, like, the sour flavor is phenomenal. It's really, really nice. It's just that 
if it wasn't there and it was just the Belgian kind of what quad or whatever the saison, whatever kind of Belgian style beer it was with just that yeasty flavor, I would not be a fan at all. The sourness, the hibiscus flavors, I guess is what it is, definitely makes it okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Even right there. Nothing but the fruitiness. I like it. Today being January 13th, on the state 1942, Henry Ford patented a plastic automobile that weighed 30% less than a regular automobile. Made out of steel, obviously. Nobody really did anything with plastic cars. I think Saturn was like a GM little spin-off that they had. They're not around anymore, but their cars were plastic. Fiberglass. Carbon fiber is really kind of the, the way to go now as far as the strength of steel, more or less, and the lightweightness of, like, plastic. Yeah, carbon fiber is badass. It's expensive, though. But, you know, time, more people start making it and shit. Costs come down, maybe. Hopefully. You'd never know that 7.5%. I gotta give a whole lot of credit for that. Like, huh. damn right. I'm not sure by the time bomb name, if this is maybe something that you at Stack expect people to sell for a while. I think my sour beers, I'm pretty sure, are generally able to be kept for a little while longer than, say, like a can of lager or something like that. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. But I think that's something that I've absorbed throughout my time doing this. And yeah, I'm not sure what the flavor would do over, say, a year, two years. If, like, the yeast would come through more, or if the fruit would... would you'd think the fruit would fade, the yeast would kind of take over, over time. That's what I'd think, anyway. But I, I could be completely wrong. It's happened. On this date in 1942, during World War II, the first use of an aircraft ejection seat by a German test pilot in a Henkel HE-280 jet fighter occurred. That was probably goddamn terrifying. <laughs> like, okay, we're gonna put you into this rocket-powered seat, and hopefully when you get to the apex of your ejection, of your arc, whatever you want to call it, the thing will deploy. And I guess it did. Although it doesn't actually say if he survived. He might not have. It's quite possible. It's crazy back then that they used to actually use people for shit like that. Even crash test dummies in cars. They used to use actual, like, dead bodies to see what would happen in a crash. Nowadays, if they wanted to test the ejection seat, they would put a crash test dummy into it and fire it off. They would not use a living human as a guinea pig. Poor guinea pigs. It's not bad. It really isn't. As far as the Belgian yeasty kind of beers go, in my mouth's opinion, this is definitely one of the tastier ones. Like, it's a, it, it's a, and it's an impressive beer. I gotta really give them credit there. Ah, uh, you know what? I don't want to. There's about this much left in the bottle. I'm gonna finish this, and then we'll have that swirled around and see. I don't want to taint the flavor of what's left in here. I, I'm, not, I'm kind of enjoying this. I. I have a feeling I might not enjoy that last little bit. Nah. It's a good sour beer. On the state in 1968, Johnny Cash performed live at Folsom State Prison. It was a whole hell of a thing. But yeah, hell of a thing. Like, I don't think anything like that happens nowadays. 
maybe in like minimum security prisons. I don't even know what Folsom State Prison's security level was at the time, if it's even around anymore. I don't know. Regardless, yummy yummy. Let's say the uh, 7.5. Drink this quick enough and I'm feeling a little bit of kind of warmth in the body, you know? Well, on this date in 1985, a passenger train plunged into a ravine in Ethiopia, killing 428 people in what would end up being the worst railroad disaster in the history of Africa. That'd be terrible. Just riding on the train, you know, doing well. I imagine possibly a train that's kind of run down, not the best. Middle of Ethiopian stuff. Probably like people hanging off it and shit. And yeah, just going along and then all of a sudden you're flying through the air and then you're dead. The flying through the air part would be pretty terrible. It's like, there's nothing you could do. You're just sitting there like, okay, um, and then you're dead. That'd be terrible. In honor of those people, let's go drink number the ha. Drink number the ha? The ha? Yeah, that's what I said. Drink number the last pork pie. I was gonna rate this without the yeastiness that I might experience in a minute. Where Belgian beers go? Like if I was gonna have like a Belgian beer rating, which I should have, it's alright, I don't really usually like them. This would be up there at like eight and a half or so, for sure. No points deducted for lack of ingredients or a date because like I said, this came from the brewery. This is not gonna be clear. I am quite sure of that. Oh my goodness. That might, this might be the worst idea like I've ever had in my life. Oh yeah, she became cloudy. Oh my goodness, okay, there's chunks. I saw like little chunky floaty things. Oh my. Oh my. Do you see? As I smack my light and make my camera go all fucking wiggly. I'm a genius. This shirt is like. It barely fits. It feels like it's, it's almost too small. I like it though. It's pissing me off. Sorry. Okay. I kind of just want to down this and get it over with, but at the same time, I should like take one drink and get the kind of impression of the flavor and then do the final drink. Well, but yeah, so let's... Cheers, everybody, again. Oh wow! The, the that much of the like there was a, a decent amount of yeast in that little last bit, and the way that's counteracting with all the sourness and things and stuff and kill the time bomb. Drink number the last. Oh my god! Jesus. Okay. Like I said, Stack Brewing, Corporation, Time Bomb, Sour, Hibiscus, Belgian, Weirdness, minus the yeast, seven and a half, with the yeast, five, maybe, stuff dangerous, Belgian, not bad. And that is going to do it for today's Daily Drink Vlog. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then be sure to smash that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then be sure to smash that subscribe button. If you got some saving, then put some comments in the box down below. Thanks again, and I'll be back with another Daily Drink Vlog tomorrow. A peace out! Went to the liquor store today, actually, and kind of resupplied my beers for the trying 
Got a goddamn ten and a half percent Belgian quad by these guys that is probably going to try and kill me 